I want to talk a minute about mimosa bark tincture, which I am in the process of making now. I was going to wait until September to harvest the bark. It's a better time. But um, the mimosa trees that I had in the front, um, they were really, really badly taken over by those furry white aphids. So I decided to cut them down. I have two trees growing in my bed and front beds that I, I don't really want there but every year they put out new growth and then I cut them back and um, last year was my first year actually making this tincture I'm really impressed with it um, this is used in traditional Chinese medicine and other places as a mood elevator and I find it to be extremely effective that way uh, it's also used in India and Africa for a variety of things it's shown to be anti-cancer, antibacterial. Um, there's a study I'm going to link to in the description that shows that it's actually really effective at treating second and third degree burns. So what I did last year uh, is the same as I'm doing now. I stripped the bark off. This is all the bark that didn't fit in my dehydrator. I'm going to use the, um, I think I'm going to make a mobile for my backyard with the sticks and some beads. Uh, so I let that dry and then I ground it down into a fine powder and you can see on the label I used one part by weight so let's say I used an ounce of powder to five parts by volume so I would use five ounces of 75 percent alcohol and it looks like I did harvest these pretty early last year um, well the end of the month so I'm, I'm a month three weeks early okay um, the other thing I did is I put um, habanero tincture in there. Habanero capsaicin tinctures are known as catalysts um, for whatever medicine you're taking. They um, increase your circulation, they get things moving, gastric juices, and they just help to move the medicine through your system. It doesn't take a lot. I do approximately a drop of the fresh habanero tincture per maybe ounce or so. Um, you can also see that that's a small bottle. That's a one ounce. The dropper bottle is only a one ounce bottle. And that's because I don't use this a whole lot. And um, despite what people think, dropper bottles do leak. I mean, air they are permeated by air and it does take a really long time. But I've had small bottles go dry after three or four years that were well sealed and in the fridge. Um, so I only put it in the one ounce bottle and when I need to refill that from the main uh, mason jar, that's what I do. The things that I don't even take regularly don't even go into dropper bottles. Um, I take about two mil of this, one to two mil when I do use it. I find it very uplifting. Sometimes it makes me giddy. It helps me to concentrate when I'm having a hard time focusing on and I'm procrastinating. Um, I think it's a really, really great herb.